So my name is Laura Hoskins um, and I'm an English teacher by training. I'm currently head of one of our university language centres, uh, the Espeslong. Uh, Espeslong means uh, the language space. Um, I also coordinate in parallel to that the university's professional development programme for internationalisation called Défi International, which means international challenge. And in this presentation, I'm going to tell uh, you all about a, a small virtual exchange initiative that we are running uh, for the first time uh, this semester in order to connect in light uh, students with our students here in Bordeaux. And this story that I'm going to tell you will hopefully uh, provide a springboard to discuss uh, virtual exchange opportunities within the Enlight network. Um, and as I said, yeah, I know there are a lot of people here today that, uh, that work on virtual exchange. Okay, so I'm going to start with a little bit about the Espace Long that you can see here in this virtual uh, tour of Bordeaux. The Espace Long is part of a network of language centres on our sprawling campus here in Bordeaux. And our language centres provide a wide range of learning formats and resources to students from different academic backgrounds. At the Espace Long, our students come from health and human science backgrounds. And my colleagues at the Centre de Long, I think Alexandra Reynolds is here today, uh, uh, work with STEM students, so science and technology. So that's a little bit about the, the situation where the Espace Long fits into the University of Bordeaux. Now a little bit about the work that we do. Here on the left, you can see our, our activities, our learning activities. We have a wide uh, variety of formats, as I mentioned. And in recent years, we've tried to diversify our offer um, at the Espace Long to widen our reach uh, to become not just a centre for language learning, but also a centre for intercultural exchange. For example, we've we set up a tandem system um, offering French English speaking workshops. Um, we've um, set up a matching sit system to match students but it hasn't always been easy to bring international students and domestic students together, in fact. Um, our staff that you can see there on the right, uh, holding up the, the whiteboards, welcoming students to the Espace Long. Our, our staff is made up uh, of a team of uh, foreign language lectrices, so teaching assistants or language assistants, the higher education equivalent of language assistants, and student monitors. Many of those uh, people in the photos are students themselves, um, tutors. Often they're very international, um, as you can see from the, from the welcome messages there. So that's the Espace Long, that's part of my work. Um, where does virtual exchange fit into this? So in parallel to my work at the Espace Long as head of the Espace Long, I've taken an interest over the past uh, three or so years in virtual exchange. Uh, we had, for example, over 200 uh, of our students following the flagship Erasmus Plus virtual exchange program cultural encounters. And I myself followed training um, opportunities for educators, the Evolve training program and the tech advanced design uh, with Unit collaboration. And during the first lockdown last year, um, the introduction to facilitated dialogue. And I've been designing and implementing class to class uh, exchanges with partners in, in the USA. So more recently, you can see some of the screen grabs of our exchanges there on, on the right. But I hadn't connected these virtual exchanges with the activities of the Espace Long um, until this autumn when France went into lockdown for a second time, um, which was a major disruption and really a game changer for us at the Espace Long. With that context, uh, all our offer had to move very swiftly onto Zoom. Um, and this forced us to upskill our online facilitation skills very quickly. Um, as you can see, some of the, the communication we put out via Instagram, uh, we were offering many uh, Zoom speaking workshops per day. And this in itself seeded the idea of offering our learners something that they couldn't get face to face. So, so that's to say authentic and meaningful interactions with learners who don't necessarily share, share the first, uh, se sorry, learners who don't necessarily share the first same language as them the same first language as them, sorry. So that's a little bit about the context in which in Live came about. On the one hand, we really wanted to do this for our learners. Um, and then we heard about Enlight. We heard that Enlight was moving forward and we realized that there was a real opportunity there to go further with our own projects at the Espace Long 
and contribute to bringing students of the Enlight Network together, uh, working together for the first time. So based on the lessons uh, I'd learned from the training programs um, that I'd followed, I designed in live uh, last autumn. I'm now going to tell you a little bit more about what the program involves and how it works. So in live stands for um, in light network language and intercultural virtual exchange. The basic idea is to get students from across the Enlight network talking about and sharing their perspectives on current societal challenges whilst collaborating on a social media campaign that turns all these discussions they're having into a tangible output. Now this is in keeping with the, with the principles of virtual exchange that you can see here on the left. So principles defined by the recent um, Evolve Erasmus Plus project led by colleagues in Groningen. And this is also in keeping, I feel, with the Enlight missions that you can see here on the right. Okay, I mentioned that students uh, will be connecting, getting together, talking about current societal challenges and issues. Here they are on the left. So the in live topics, um, the, the topics that we chose to explore with, with participants in the program were actually topics that we were already exploring in our English classes. You can see them there on the left. And they conveniently tied in with some of the in light flagship areas, for example, climate change. Our topics were also intended to appeal to students from a wide range of disciplinary backgrounds in that they don't, they don't need any prerequisite, pre uh, any disciplinary knowledge, prior disciplinary knowledge in order to participate in, in the exchange. Okay, I'm gonna walk you through a little bit, the, uh, I'm gonna walk you through the program a little bit to, to see how it works. And I'm gonna describe the program starting at the output that drives it, so the end point. Um, so the end point, the output, the task is to design a social media campaign. Um, students will work collaboratively to produce this campaign in the form of an Instagram visual. So it's a bit similar to the visual that you saw earlier on with the speaking workshops. They will be designing uh, a campaign using the same tools that I used to make that one. And that uh, campaign will be disseminated via the Espace Long uh, social media channels at the end of the exchange. Now to complete this assignment, students meet once a week, over eight weeks in small groups on Zoom. And they'll be accompanied, accompanied by one of our staff, who, one of our uh, lectrices or teaching staff who facilitates the session and helps the discussions run smoothly. I think some of our fac facilitators are maybe here today. I think I saw Melissa Watsky in, in the participants. And students will work on this task, on this, this project um, in intercultural pairs. So one Bordeaux student with a student from one of the um, Enlight partner universities. So after getting to know each other in a first session, uh, students will start to explore and discuss the five topics we saw before. They will select one to focus on and they'll read and review, read and view. So there are videos as well. They'll read and view uh, curated resources. So resources that we've gathered that are related to this topic. They'll create, curate and present their own resources, gather their own resources in their contexts and, and share those with their, with their peers. They'll decide um, and uh, decide on an outline, on a purpose, on the target audience of their social media campaign. They'll finalize these designs, move forward with these designs. They'll engage in peer review as well, reviewing the uh, designs produced by other dyads, by other pairs. And finally, they will disseminate, they will share their, their output, it will be disseminated, and the last session of the course will be dedicated to taking stock, uh, reflecting, uh, reflecting on the whole experience. So each week is dedicated to one of these phases in the project. And usually in a typical session, we will start with ice breaking and warming up activities as a plenary before doing um, tasks in breakout rooms in, in smaller groups, um, Last week was the first week, so we started with one-to-ones in breakout groups and then bigger breakout groups. And this is the mode that, that we'll work with. Um, they will form a, a partnership though with one person in particular that is their partner for, for the project. 
And throughout, throughout oh, I should mention the facilitators as well, their role throughout all of this. Um, our Spaslong facilitators are there to act as, as process leaders. They scaffold the activities, make sure that they run smoothly, make sure that the project moves forward um, and help the students to interact and, and maintain the rhythm in these in interactions. Now, um, in terms of contact time and personal work, uh, there are 12 hours of synchronous contact time, um, one and a half hours a week over eight weeks, some personal work, perhaps six to eight hours. Um, this could be supplemented with a reflective journaling uh, element. And I know that my colleagues um, in science and technology are having their students um, complete, re complete reflective journals. So that's an outline of the programme. I'm going to show you now um, the, the participants, the students that are involved for this first round, their prof a little bit about their profile. So let's take a look at, at these. So with this, for this first session of in live, um, we'd planned it for 48 students initially, 24 Bordeaux students and 24 students from other universities. But in the end, we had some 80 students signing up. Um, so yeah, uh, we were luckily able to, to increase the capacity by collaborating with colleagues at the Centre de Langue and we're able to offer everyone a place. Um, we're only one week into the exchange, so I, I can't tell you how many of these participants will complete it. But um, in the first session alone, in the first week, we had a total of 64 out of the 80 that had signed up that were present. A little bit about the background or the, yeah, the background of our participants. Um, they come from a range of backgrounds and university levels, from first years to doctoral students. I don't know all the disciplinary uh, backgrounds of our partner students. If, um, some of them are English majors, I think. Some are biotechnology students. If, if there are any of our partners here today, feel free to, to comment in the chat and, and, and put the profiles, disciplinary profiles of your students. I do know, however, the profiles, the disciplinary profiles of our students in Bordeaux. You can see the subject areas that they come from here. So they come from a wide range of disciplines and given that the exchange is learner driven with students collecting, gathering resources, making the decisions, I think the diversity of skill and thought will hopefully broaden the academic experience for our students, particularly um, yeah, often our students tend to work in, in disciplinary silos. So I think that's another uh, value of the exchange is being able to bring even our Bordeaux students from different disciplines together. So that's their profile, their background. Um, a little bit now about um, their motivations. Um, part of, why have these students signed up for, for in live? Um, this word cloud shows you the motivations expressed by students uh, when they signed up. Um, this is a word cloud generated from a pre-sessional survey. You can see that English is a major motivation I think students in France are often looking for an authentic interactional experience where they can develop or maintain their speaking, uh, their speaking skills. In their English courses, it's often the case that they mix with, with francophones. Um, so yeah, a virtual exchange like this one can often provide an opportunity for them to have authentic exchanges uh, in, in English with, um, with, with um, people that have another first language, that speak another first language as their first language. One student who followed a virtual exchange with me in the first semester said, in these virtual exchanges, you're cornered into speaking in English. So I think, yeah, that's a, a motivation that emerged quite a bit. And it seems, I mean, based on this word cloud, that it's a motivation for our partner students as well. Other students in the Enlightened Net Network also said that they were signing up for this reason. I think it's also significant that people is a key word um, that, that, that came out. Virtual exchanges are people to people learning formats and interactions between people from different backgrounds, from, from a diverse range of disciplines drive these learning outcomes. And virtual exchange also connects uh, teachers, not people, not just uh, students, but also teachers. When we design virtual exchanges together, when we implement them together, when we take stock on the whole experience, um, we're often building a relationship, building a professional network, um, connecting with, with uh, educators around the world. 
So that's the in live story so far. Um, we plan to run it uh, each semester via the ISPAS long. So we, we plan to, to run it in the fall semester and in the spring semester every year. Um, and we're already thinking about the wider opportunities that this exchange or that this type of uh, virtual exchange could offer the Enlight network. Here are some of them. And I'll use these as questions to open the floor to you and your questions, comments, ideas, input. Um, okay, at the top there. So how can we embed in live in, in our existing curricula? Some universities may wish to give in live credits or as an elective or as a broadening course. Some universities may wish to incorporate it into a larger uh, credit bearing course. And who, who could, my second point there, sorry, yeah. Who could we connect with? Um, we connected with, with people in different universities, but for example, the ISPAS long could connect with different centers, different structures in different universities. If we were to upscale, who would our uh, partner structures in other universities be? Would they be language centers? Would they be academic skills centers? Would they be student hubs of, of learning, student networks? My third point there, uh, could we imagine uh, co-designing or future iterations of InLive, co-facilitating co future, future iterations of InLive or, simulate, or similar um, virtual exchange projects like this that are facilitated? And in that case, who could our facilitators be? Could they be teaching assistants, lectors or language assistants at universities, doctoral students perhaps, student mentors, um, even pre-service teachers? And how could we train them? Who could train them um, in, in online facilitation and facilitated dialogue? And, and I know that we have some real experts um, in, the, in the network that we have a, a lot of expertise in that, that have a lot of expertise in that. Could we imagine widening our, widening our offer to other languages um, in live in French, for example? So that could attract French language learners and would also give those French students with lower levels of English profici proficiency the opportunity to have an intercultural learning experience. Um, at the moment uh, in live, we, we open it to students with a B1 level or above um, in English. Um, and we have lots of French students that haven't got that level. You know, could we uh, imagine uh, doing it in another language? Uh, could we imagine yeah, do, doing it in, in, in the local language? I know that uh, I have some colleagues that are German specialists at the law faculty that are already, up, already setting up uh, virtual exchanges in German, for example. How could we use my penultimate point there? How could we use uh, in live or projects like in live virtual exchange projects as a stepping stone to mobility? So for example, with students taking part in the exchange before a period of mobility in a partner university uh, as a way to make connections, build relationships before, um, before de departing, before going to the uh, host university. And finally, how could we use virtu a virtual exchange format like this one uh, or similar ones, uh, different ones for professional development across the Enlight network? Uh, there was incidentally some interest from lecturers in participating in live when I sent out the call, uh, but we've reserved it for students. Um, as I said before, co-designing a virtual exchange in partnership with a teacher or a lecturer in another institution is in itself, I feel, an opportunity for professional development because you come into contact with different ways of doing um, and that can in turn transform your, your teaching uh, or teaching practice, practices outside virtual exchange. So those are my invitations for discussion. Um, thank you all for listening.